So at CITES you have to recall that the uplisting proposal from Appendix 2 to Appendix 1 for the four Southern African elephant populations, that proposal was supported by the great majority of African elephant range states, by 29 African countries. Uh, when it was discussed on the floor, uh, Namibia, and I, I didn't hear what uh, Zimbabwe say this, but maybe they did, but Namibia very specifically said that it, inv it would invoke an article of CITES which if that po those populations were uplisted, then it would take out what's called a reservation. And that means it would be able to not abide by the decision of the Conference of the Parties. But you do have to ask yourself a question, and that is, so who would they trade with? Because you can only trade with another party that's also taken out a reservation, and who would that be? Some people said maybe Japan would do it, but quite frankly, in the current climate, I think it would be extremely difficult for uh, Japan to do that and not become the victim of a massive, uh, a massive international condemnation. I think they would become regarded as a pariah state. And the other place that they could trade is with a non-party, such as North Korea. Well, I can't do anything about North Korea because they're not a member of CITES. But I think it was a threat that was taken seriously enough for at least some uh, parties, and I think possibly the European Union as a whole, um, to not support the uplisting that was proposed by the majority of African elephant range states. Yeah, I think the European Union this time on many issues was very good. I mean, to come forward with tighter regulations on trophy hunting, uh, I think in response to um, wide public concerns about, about what happens you know, I, I guarantee if you'd walked down the street a year ago and asked people whether lions could be shot as trophies before Walter Palmer did what he did to Cecil, most people would have said, I don't, I don't believe it still goes on. But we know that it does, and anything that brings in tighter regulations is a good thing. The European Union also co-sponsored a number of very important proposals. So they, they certainly, in my view, did a lot better than in some of the previous conferences of the parties that I've been to, and I have actually been to every conference of the parties since 1989. So I have a long-term perspective on this and I'm looking forward I have to say because here we in South Africa we are we are working within an environment that is very tolerant very accepting of wildlife utilization uh, sustainable use as it's described here um, when we go to uh, Sri Lanka for the next conference of the parties in three years time we're entering in a co completely different environment one that does not accept uh, wildlife utilization in any comprehensive way, would not accept trophy hunting, reveres wildlife, has set aside nearly 30% of its, of its country for conservation purposes. And I think that'll make a very interesting counterbalance to the kind of narrative that has sat behind this conference. But now there is actually a dialogue going on between the CITES Secretariat and a number of organizations, many organizations represented by the Species Survival Network, of which Born Free is a leading member, to try and explore those issues and to find Look, if you don't even care about welfare and you only care about economics and sustainability, doesn't it make sense to make sure that the animals that have been caught from the wild and traded are caught in as humane a way as possible, as many survivors as possible, so that the pressure on the wild population is as little as possible? That seems to make great economic sense. We were presented with language and we have to work with that language. And if we're not happy with it as an international community, we'll come back in three years' time and try and persuade and encourage uh, parties to take a slightly different view. This, uh, as I said in my closing remarks, CITES is a continuum. It goes on and on and on, and I will be gone before it is over. So we need to work within that framework and get the very best that we possibly, possibly can, as far as we can, reflecting international opinion, which I think is increasingly concerned about the future of wildlife on our planet. Awesome. Thank you very much, Will. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. And on behalf of the Species Survival Network, I look forward to seeing many familiar faces at COP18, which I hope and now know will be hosted for the first time by the beautiful island of Sri Lanka. Thank you.